Good evening. Welcome to the December 14th, 2016 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Running about 10 minutes late, but uh, here we are. Uh, can we do a roll call, please? Mr. Blaze? Here. Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Hebert? Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Okay, this is Sam for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who don't know, this flag is half mast today because of John Glenn. And I didn't I didn't know why. Oh sorry. Well for those of you who don't know that the flag is half mass and I didn't know why, so this guy knows it all. So he says John Glenn, which I would say is appropriate. <coughs> we uh, first have approval of the minutes of two thousand nine <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, November ninth, two thousand sixteen. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve this presented. Second? Second. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Abstain. And three yes and one abstain. Thank you very much. Uh, there's one item to add to the agenda. If it's, uh, the board uh, will allow me to just enter it in immediately and get it off the table. It's a letter or an extension uh, from uh, Mr. Young. Um, you remember this from the uh, meeting on July 13th, 2016. Uh, on uh, 244 Payne Road, we had given him approval, and uh, his uh, got a family member in Vietnam that's ill, and needs to know if he could get an extension. So, if the board is okay with that, I'll bring it to the record. It'll be okay, and then we'll vote on it. We don't have to go anything new with the new rule. We can we can allow it for another six months uh, for one time. Thank you, uh, dear Mr. Mark Maroon. My name is uh, Brian Young. Uh, uh, Young. Uh, the address of 244 Payne Road, Scarborough, Maine, 0474, home ad occupation permit, had approved on July 13, 2016, appeal number 2578, expires in six months, which is January 13, 2017. I am writing you this letter because I'm respectfully, gently asking you to help expand uh, of my permit time to help me financially and my family matter. A recent member of the family got cancer in Vietnam. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Young. Uh, I personally uh, thanks for your time and appreciate your help. So I bring this forward as a, in the form of a motion to extend for another six months past January 13th, 2017, which would bring us to July, thir July 13th, 2017. So uh, do I have a motion to motion approve? To extend. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. I hope all goes well for you, Mr. Young. I'm sorry to come through that. Okay, we'll jump into the normal regular appeals here. The first appeal is a 2587, a variance appeal request by David Haskell and Sarah Douglas, 9 Ship Road, uh, Shipwreck Road. This is map U1, parcel 80. And if you'd like to take the microphone, this is a revisit from a, a uh, request to table. Good evening. I'm Karen Haskell, wife of David Haskell. Uh, Sarah Douglas and her husband Greg live in Fort Myers, Florida in the winter, so they're not here this evening. And we regret that our draftsman, Travis Kinney, who uh, presented, uh, represented us last time we were here, has been called away in Boston uh, with his son. Uh, couldn't make it tonight, so I apologize. So I'll be representing our appeal. Uh, we handed out or delivered to each of you uh, a reference packet. I tried to put this together just to make any reference a little bit easier. Uh, and Did a nice I'm job with it. Pardon? Did a nice job with it. Thank you. So the first segment is exactly the application we submitted initially two months ago. Uh, the biggest area of question was the way we had responded to the four questions, specifically that asked for variance, and so I provided an addendum that updated those responses. Uh, the third segment of this are just some uh, I've pulled out elements of uh, all of the work that we did, some of the graphics, uh, visuals of the survey map, footprint uh, plan showing the proposed bump out, uh, those kinds of things. And then the back of the uh, 
Lab 4, some of you had shown uh, some interest in seeing visually some of the ter deterioration we were experiencing at our cottage. Uh, the, the rotting roof, uh, deteriorating and crumbling chimney and uh, fireplace structure. Uh, I especially like the pipe. I especially <coughs> like the pipe. So <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, that's, I hope that's a pretty one. <laughs> what I'd like to focus on tonight is segment two, uh, the responses that we updated. Uh, in answer to the first question, the land in question, the, the property, as you know, was purchased by the family in 1946. Not a lot has been done to the property since then, except for some uh, movement of a garage that was washed out into the road at a storm, and that was attached to the house. And further, that we did uh, a close in the back porch with windows uh, to make it more livable. Um, the cottage does sit on a lot size that's smaller than any other lot uh, uh, in the area, as you know. All the other lots on the street are 50 feet wide, and ours is 40 feet wide. We believe this is because initially the town had wanted that to be. Could you do me a favor and just grab that hand? If you could grab that hand, Mike, when you do it, just tap on it to make and sure it's live. No, uh, she's got to Initially, the I think. Just on the bottom there, I think it'll switch. Okay. Says so. uh, Verdap Street. We, we think that was a paper street. They initially thought Verdap might go through all the way to the beach, which is why this is 40 feet wide. Um, so that's one of the areas that is causing us, I think, the most challenge as we try to do anything. What that precipitates as we start to take a look now at the major structural, uh, mechanical, and electrical issues with the camp. We've since our last meeting met with two separate building professionals uh, to discuss the scope of the work that we need to be done to repair these issues and start to get our pricing together and take a look at exactly what would happen uh, as they begin that work. That causes us, as we think about the amount of expense, the investment that we to make these repairs, in particular taking down that chimney and fireplace, literally not just re replacing the roof, it, it will create a large hole and they're going to have to really take that chimney out of there, uh, which will destroy most of the, the roof that's already there. Uh, so that, that's going to be at a considerable cost. So what we're asking as we think about that investment as a family and how the cottage is used today, like to have the board consider our ability to ex extend our living space, expand our living space. And since the fact that we're in, I think, four restricted zones, we have nowhere to go on either side to the front or to the street side or to the both sides, as you know. The only way we can get any additional uh, reprieve on our living space is to go up. So the first hearings we're asking for is an allowance to let us raise the roof ridge. By raising the roof ridge, we would raise it from the center of the ridge four and a half feet without raising the edges of the walls. Uh, it would result in a story and a half building instead of a one story building. That would also improve the slope. Uh, one of the reasons that the cottage has the amount of water damage that it has is because of the slope of the roof Second, and you have these visuals in your packet, I'm sure you know. The second request uh, for a variance is in creating a second story or second floor for living primarily sleeping in storage. We need to make room on the first floor for uh, a stairway that's code compliant. And that's difficult to do in the small space that we have now without asking for some movement.
I'm, I took something about the microphone. If you could do me a favor, sorry. Just want to make sure, but I, 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 I okay. called. So which which way are you proposing tonight? As as as, pa as the plan is I, in reading here. in reading Brian's comments uh, that he shared with all of you, I know that there's concern about the uh, parking spaces. Um, we currently park three cars at the cottage. Right now we park two cars, and we've been parking one car. Right in. So what we what we would lose is the ability to pull a car in here. Um, although if you have a small car, you could probably kitty corner it here and get three cars still to where we're parking currently, which is on the lawn area between the cottage and the pavement. Uh, the, the two cars in front there or back? Yes, is that uh, side? This is street. Okay, so back. Is that on your property? The, the two cars that you park currently, is that on the street or is that on the, on the property? It's you said you have a total of three. It's lawn, but it's, it's, if you look at the property line, it, it would technically be some of that is town property. But it's, it's grass. It's, it's grass. Down. Okay, that, that's really yeah. town. That's grass. This has had always been, because this was a garage, had always been driveway. And now, there, now there's some green on there, but we believe that under that is crushed rock on what it was originally a driveway why we, we believe that this is going to be allowable because this was impervious. Um, but those are really the two primary things that were coming before you uh, to ask for this, those two variances and the ability to raise the ridge of the roof out of the front and a small back dormer uh, and then to do the bump out to increase the living space so we can begin the work to do all of the tremendous enhancements and improvements we need to make to this property. Thank you. Uh, Set in a lot of the meetings when uh, the town was going through the character uh, based co coding, and we feel that this would have a tremendous impact on the aesthetic of our cottage, but also on just the aesthetic of the Higgins Beach overall. This in particular, with just right now, our roof is quite flat, and this is not a final, but it's a representation of what we would hope to achieve. Right now, the roof ridge is here, and it's very low and flat, and by elevating the middle, allowing us to create more of a porch look uh, over what's now the porch anyway and adding a dormer it would be much more in keeping I think with the character of the aesthetics that the character uh, based zoning is looking for. Thank you. Um, so you want to, so you want to um, clarify uh, your comments about the direct parking or anything else you prefer to add to this conversation? Uh, yeah I'm just trying to uh, make the board aware that down on shipwreck there is a, a concern about parking already pretty cramped down there. There are some cottages that have a very difficult time providing on-site parking for their, their automobiles, and so they start to creep out onto the street. So I think it's something that the board should weigh carefully um, as they look at infilling that, that piece. And I understand uh, what the Haskells are, are trying to do and, and why, uh, but it's still a concern um, with the parking aspect. The other thing I want to mention too, and I'm sure the Haskells know this, is that um, most of the, the repairs, the, the photos, which were very helpful, um, that you included, um, some of the things that are that need to be addressed in the cottage, could be addressed without need of a variance. Um, those things, uh, in and of themselves, are not necessarily an argument for the variance. They are definitely expensive things to fix. Is definitely going to be an investment. But I just want to clarify that the variance isn't predicated on, uh, or, or the repair of those issues isn't predicated on getting a variance to do them. Um, the only things that require the variance are the infill sections and the raising of the roof, and possibly, and we've talked about this, the fact that all of this work would probably trigger substantial improvement, and where it's in the floodplain, that would mean elevating the building if it needs to be elevated. We don't have an elevation certificate, I don't believe, we do. yet. Did we, we? Ha we have an elevation certificate. I think it was in your packet. I have, <coughs> I have it with I me. Apologize. I, 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 I apologize. I didn't see it either, Brian. I have it with me. I can leave feet, two inches, and where are you? And you're planning on that? 
I think you have if it hits 50%. If it's 50% more than the, I, yes. I can tell you right now, you'll be 50%. <laughs> well, it depends on how much work you do in any particular year, is that correct? That's correct. So yeah. we, what we might do in that point is do a portion of the work, maybe the exterior portion of the work or part of it at one year and then. Well, in it, if you try to do it that way, you should also be aware that sometime, we're told sometime in 2018, the new <laughs> floodplain maps will be in play and, and the elevation will actually be higher than that. So you may, you don't want to play the waiting game, I guess, too long, that's a, that's or then you're going to end up in a situation where you've got part of your work done at one elevation and now you're going to need to elevate that's the rest. Well so. uh, and to be candid with you, a, a good argument for this being a variance is the fact that you need to raise it. And I, I wouldn't want to, I would, is it, to me, one of the things but that they I would can, look for. But they can do that. Remember, they can do that now, simply okay. elevating the co cottage for floodplain compliance, they can do. Right. That doesn't require a variance. What requires a variance is changing that roof pitch on the non-conforming parts of the existing cottage. So it's very, it's a very complicated, there's a lot of moving parts to this thing, um, but I just want to clarify what triggers the variance versus what could be done without a variance. It's important for the board to understand the, the difference. Yeah, and we're aware of that, I yeah. think, as we started to think about, again, it's going to be a, a sizable expense if we did nothing in terms of raising the roof or asking for a bump out. To go through that kind of investment and not enhance living space, uh, if anything, it might even restrict it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, it, just seem, it seems like a halfway job. So um, let me open up the public hearing on this. Anybody from the public like to speak on this issue? I will close the public hearing part. We do have one letter. And do we have any from the previous meeting? I don't remember. Um, I'm on staff. I'm responding to the uh, notification. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't how to even hear you, and I'm sitting right beside you. <laughs> I got a tough crowd. It's a tough crowd. Let me make you read it. Um, I'm responding to the notification I've received regarding appeal number 2587, a request uh, by David and uh, Sarah Douglas from, for relief from the dimensional standards for their property at 9 Shipwreck uh, Road. The setback variance being uh, requested will eliminate all of the space now available for off-street parking. The only space left to park will be along Shipwreck Road. The variance, and I can't read that word, being requested will uh, have, uh, oh, we'll leave this a frontage on the Shipwreck, very narrow uh, ranging. ranging in ranging width from one foot to 34. Oh, one foot three. three oh, one, oh, okay, one foot three inches to six foot eight inches. So between the three of us, we're actually pretty good at this. Since this is a lot, it's 40 feet wide, the available space for parking seems to be uh, in the inadequate as uh, now proposed. Uh, Nancy Strong, seven shipwreck. And on the back, nothing. I, I did receive an email um, from another shipwreck road resident, um, the Nadens at 17 shipwreck. Um, in their email, they, they were addressing s several issues not necessarily related to the Haskell thing because they're also contemplating a variance request. Um, but they said there is talk in the neighborhood about Haskell's proposal and the difficulty with ma maintaining parking places. People really don't want to establish a precedent of parking so close to the street and along the right of way, especially if there are, are other options. And they, they're the ones that, that have posed um, the question, have David and his sister Sarah considered the possibility of lifting their cottage and putting parking spaces underneath similar to the LaRue cottage on the corner of Bayview and Champion? Might that work for them with, with only a 40-foot uh, road frontage? They have a real challenge. I don't know if it's appropriate for you or someone on the board to offer that suggestion, and that's not what I'm doing by reading this letter. <coughs> Uh, and maybe this has already been discussed, but it's just an idea that I thought I'd pass along. And again, those are comments from uh, that should go into the public comments. Thank you. Okay. okay. So 
So uh, seeing nobody asking any questions and that no phone calls other than that, I'll close the public part of the meeting and I'll come to the board for questions or comments. Yeah, I've, I've got a question. I went out there yesterday and, and took a look at all the cottages along Shipwreck. And that cottage is by far the closest to the road. And all the other cottages are set back closer to the ocean. Why can't this be moved closer to the ocean? Because uh, the 75 foot, you know, we, that was one of the first questions that we asked, but DP would, wouldn't, does not allow. They won't let us build out over that deck or put even a roof over it. We can't do anything that encroaches closer to the ocean. But it, your neighbors are encroaching closer to the ocean? But Is that just because they're... they grandfather. I'm, I'm sorry. You can do me a favor. Just uh, state your name, address, and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're live on TV. A lot we of people are watching. The uh, DEP, when we first met with them and we proposed the, the issue about moving closer to the resource, they said absolutely not. Uh, we asked them about digging down and, and trying to get parking under the cam. They said absolutely not. Um, so, and, you know, we've got to prove everything here and they're going to veto it anyway. So, I mean, you, know, you can't get a straight answer from like either body. It's very frustrating in terms of but we thought about that um, and uh, no, they, they, they're saying no. What has the DP, DEP approved so far or said they'd allow? Is this proposal then sent to Well, it's to been DEP? a moving target, to be truthful. This proposal, uh, the way it is now, has not. We've had yeah. three sit-down meetings, general conversations with them, and Travis had several discussions. Yeah, I, just to clarify too, I, I think I think what they're proposing to do, um, as far as the existing cottage and elevating it, that's not going to be a DEP problem. Um, right. That's clearly because the lot the DEP is going to consider the lot 100% developed under their terminology in the sand dune regulations. In other words, there's very little natural. I, I shouldn't say 100%. Maybe there's a portion up near the beach that they might consider. They said exactly. Did they say 100%? That's generally everybody's already kind of right. developed their lot in one way, shape, or, or form. So, so they, what they then go back to is the 20% coverage by buildings, and that's one of their regulations. The Haskells, like several others along Shipwreck, have several different things that are constraining their ability to do anything with their cottage, and I just want to make that clear. You can't move forward in the shoreland zone. You, they're already partially in the 75-foot setback, so there's no moving forward. If they weren't in the 75-foot setback, they could move forward if the dune regulations allowed it. Most of the time, in the back dune, they would allow you to move forward. In the frontal dune, I don't think they would. So, so they're in the frontal dune, they're in the erosion hazard area, they're in the shoreland zone, and they're in the floodplain. So they've got the, the trifecta pi plus one. <laughs> and, the, and the 15 mile an hour zone, I think. Yeah. Huh? We're in the Piper and Plover zone. Piper and Plover zone. <laughs> in the Piper and Plover zone, too. <laughs> to the point about Brian uh, parking under the cottage, you know, uh, let's say the DEP didn't say that that was not possible. Is that, does that have to go before the town? To raise the cottage enough to get a car. Below. Well, that would be that would be part of your part of your proposal. But I think where that's coming from is that if you're gonna if the improvements that you're contemplating are going to trigger substantial improvement, then you're going to have to elevate anyway. And then in elevating for floodplain, you can elevate further as long as you haven't gone above the, the 35 foot height limit. And you're probably not that close, but I don't know if you can elevate far enough to get a car underneath there. No, I just no. don't know if that's possible. Look, well, that's the oh, other no, problem. I mean, that's the other problem is that sometimes it just doesn't but work with the lot. And then in elevating, you got to create access, right. which sometimes can happen in the middle, you know, underneath. You can have a stairwell underneath, the, you know, in the footprint, not outside it. But that may not work with your floor plan. So, I mean, there are all these other... Um, angles it would have to be looked at. And to help you, e just from a practical point of view, to ease the stress 
the truth is, is that none of what you want to do is allowed. So everybody here is on your side by even talking to them. So when you look at the people that are doing it, whether the state or us, the state's getting paid, we do it volunteer work, the town does it because they try to do the right thing. The truth is, you're not really getting a run around, you're getting an opportunity to fix a problem that isn't allowed to be fixed. So it's a good thing that people are working with you. It's a bad thing when they say no. So that's why last time when we postponed you to bring back some better information. I know it's frustrating, um, but no solves the problem really fast. And any agency can do that at any point. And so the, the goal is to get, get what you want and recognize that they're really, they're not out to get you. They're just stuck with four rules. Like we, we don't, there are a lot of rules in here we don't like, but we just don't have choices on it. I hope they just... And, and I think, doesn't that give you some flexibility? I understand I understand no. that it's black and white on the shoreline, but with this character-based thing, I mean, you read through that, and there are all kinds of contradictions, and, you know, uh, terms aren't defined, and you talk to three people, and you get three different opinions. Right. And you know? it's, a, it's a, a great attempt with a lot of time and a lot of effort to make it as flexible as possible in a place that really should be half acre lots and none of them are they're 40 or 50 feet by 100 and the sad reality is that a lot of a lot of people I don't want to get to a soliloquy here but the, the reality is that area has major problems this board has the ability to help you through that um, but it's restrained by so many regular the same regulations you're, you're dealing with plus and the attempt that was put together to character based was to eliminate the need to come to us on simple items and to make some things more flexible. The reality is it actually made it difficult for some others uh, because anything, it, it, it's sort of like when you take a, they, they give you a, a, a vitamin and they say there's no harmful side effects or there's no side effects. Well, there's no side effects, there's no effects, right? So it doesn't do anything. So it's sort of the same thing. If everything has a consequence. So everything that's, anytime you change anything, you're going to have a ripple effect. And sometimes it benefits people and sometimes it doesn't. The goal is to help as many as you can. But let's get back to the point on this. Um, can I just ask one more question? I'll sure. If you read that uh, first question that we had to answer. Right, the most important one. the state's definition of that, you would not even be here. Well, no, but I'm saying if you follow that, you would never, ever pass an appeal. That's never correct. Never give an appeal. I would agree with you if it's taken literally. No, but you're not taking it. But you don't take that literally. So I wouldn't clearly there is some flexibility, is there not? No, there's not. No? There's not. We're going to, if, if we believe that it meets that standard, we will approve it. But we've got to believe it meets that standard of virtually no value. And um, probably not the best place to be discussing that, <laughs> to be candid with you, um, is on, on this, you know, at this time. Because we're going to do the best we can to look at this and make a sound decision meeting the federal, the state laws. And that state law is a tough law to meet. So Chairman that's Maroon, as, uh, if we were to separate these two requests, the raising the roof and adding the dormers as one part, bump out as another, can you separate those two and maybe... We could divide the question. No. Uh, I'll give you a, my personal opinion is if you want to let the least pain, this is just a personal opinion, I'll speak for myself and the board. If you go in the footprint and you want to go up, my guess is most of the board will say fine. Because it's going to cost you well over half, it's going to cost you $200,000 to repair that house. And I would argue personally that if you're putting $200,000 into a property, it has proven that it has no value as it sits. And I, I would argue the other piece that if it's in a flood zone, 
we already know the flood insurance is going to be going up by as much as 10 times. It's behind by 12. So right now, it's if, if you've been following the news on that at all, you're going to see some nasty flood increase in the product fees and probably requirements. So I think those are pretty, pretty good arguments to justify no practical use of the property. That's me. But I would probably stop there. And I don't believe that you'd find any resistance along the way from that. I think you'd probably sail through the rest of the process. That's just an opinion. And Mr. Longstaff may have a different opinion. And the board may have a different opinion. And does that mean we would have to come back with just that part of our request, or can that be discussed no, tonight? If you would like to uh, ask us to divide the question into just the issue of the footprint and work out with um, Mr. Longstaff's staff the entranceway, I don't personally have a problem with that. Does the board have a problem with dividing the question on this? Can we do that, Brian? It's up to you. I don't, I don't have a problem with this done. You folks said you had, had an elevation certificate. Yes. Yeah. I don't see in the packets at all, so I'm not it sure. Wasn't, it wasn't, is it not behind? We're going to try the first The first application? Uh -huh. Would you say 12 foot 2? The lowest, the lowest transverse uh, member of the floor is. So if the board is comfortable with me dividing the question, eliminating the second part, and just dealing with the part that is the footprint, I would suggest that we do that. Does the board have a problem with that? I will follow your lead. Okay. Explain to me again what you want to do. You want to leave the footprint exactly the way it is? Well, they've got two, basically the appeal is broken into, into two pieces, although it's really not defined that way. It's the, yeah, there they are want two to different raise the roof, issues. Which, and then expand six feet. Right. And raising the roof doesn't, doesn't change the footprint. Correct. And I believe that if they're, they're, they're experiencing the, the nightmare they're experiencing partially because they're trying to do something that I know can't be done. So I'm trying to save them some time. No matter what we say, if we give them one extra inch, they're not going to get. They're not going to get approved. So we could give them an inch, and then it's not. Gonna, I don't believe it will get it passed. But you may, but I don't believe it. The yeah, DDP. I think we could give you. We could give you 20 feet, and you won't get past the DDP. I don't believe. I mean, I, just my experience. I mean, you may be able to. It's just. A, but I do know that watching this over the last 20 years, um, if you stay in the footprint, I've yet to see the DEP say no. I don't know if you've seen anything different than that. I think and historically, if you've been within the footprint, we have, as a board, allowed it. But going outside of that footprint and doing addendums or adding on, like you're suggesting, we haven't allowed it. Because okay. it doesn't, it just doesn't, in my mind, it doesn't meet the reasonable return. Going up and staying within the footprint, you're not intrusing anymore. We've already got a couple of people that have addressed parking problems down there that have written in and taken the time to write in to us. I think it's going to be very difficult to expand that. Okay. Um, I guess I just need some direction on where we go from here if we right, accept so that. You're okay with me dividing the question. What I'll do is, to, is request the board to take a vote to divide. Divide. Technically, we're not dividing the question as in a typical Robert's Rules of Order situation. But we're taking the request and we're dividing the request because it is two finite items. In this case, it's very finite. We're, you're talking about raising the roof and doing what you want to do and then specifically adding a section in a block. Well, normally we don't go rewriting the regulations. We've made that mistake before, or rewriting your packages. We've made that mistake before, and we didn't do it. We didn't do that. But that is very finite. So if we said, and as you pointed out, you have other options. So if we eliminate that part, take that off the table, so it would become, it would become something like this. I have moved to approve the motion as requested without any expansion of the footprint. And that's what the motion I would recommend be made. And then we'd have to go through the criteria and justify why we made that decision that we'd be able to hold up in court. We're just asking before the meeting started that we've got one in court now that I was asking how we were coming to this. So that we believe that we could support our position and, and win that argument. 
if, if it was ever challenged. And either once we make that vote, we state our positions and it falls where it falls. Um, okay. So if the board's comfortable, let's continue that path. Um, and uh, that would be my motion at the end um, if the board's continue to come to that position. Would, would that require raising the cottage? Yes. If the cost of what we're doing is more than 50 percent of the you, I, I would I would put in there that you need to raise the cottage because I you got to meet them you got, you've got to meet the reasonable return and and the hardship requirement and to me <coughs> as you pointed out eloquently you can't meet it so we need a reason to be able to meet it and I believe that a raising it to be above the flood zone especially with what's coming down the pike um, we're in a, we're in flood fees of fifty thousand dollars a year. To some people and some properties. If you're going up, you're better to get ahead of it. You do not want to have flood insurance. You do not want to have the flood insurance is bankrupt, and there's yeah. only one way to get that money back. And your elevations, it would behoove you to do it. Yeah, you can speak to it better than I can. The insurance side. Well, I'm I'm thinking more about raising it. Enough so that you can have some parking underneath it. I don't think that's it's physically possible, but my aesthetically, it probably would not look very pleasing either. Okay. Yeah. Maybe just putting it right now. To me, it, it, to me, if we, if to me on the uh, the way I look at this is look, let's keep it simple and clean. Give them if we agree that these are mats. All we're doing is we're talking about the footprint, which we've talked about a hundred times before. Mm -hmm. Then the question is, does it meet the four criteria? And we're not getting into any of the other, because they've got, like they said, they've got three other boards they've got to go through. It makes the job of the other boards much easier because now there's something they can stand on. This is what <coughs> Scarborough's accepting. Scarborough's pretty tough. They've got their rules down. They know what they're doing. They've got competent people behind the scenes. That carries weight. My guess is that'll make life easier. And, and you'll, you'll get through the process. That's just an opinion. And the more finding of facts that we can come up with when we're doing this, from the information you presented to us in your packet is a very good packet. So it allows us to actually come up with some things that we can put in there that if you hadn't gone as thorough as you had, we wouldn't have had that. You did a good job in the second. Yeah, you did a good job. The last first one would have never done. Thank you. Um, so the next step then is for us to now continue with our creative process and get more defined. No, no, I think, I think what the next step is that uh, you've already, if you're comfortable with us, talking about not expanding the footprint, we'll continue down that path okay. and then vote and make a decision as to whether or not you meet the criteria. If you don't meet the criteria, you can't come back for a year for another request. You can come back a year later, but you have to wait one year to come back for a similar appeal. If you do make it, then you've got uh, <laughs> a very narrow window to start going, but you, my guess is you'll, you go, my guess is you'll go through the, set, the rest of the process pretty easily. I hope so. I don't think our roof is going to hold out for another <laughs> year. Well, we'll want to talk about that. So uh, what I'd like to do is come down. Do you want to go back to the board? Because Ed's the only one that's asking Oh, yeah. And yeah. He's the only one who's asking questions. Anybody else want to ask questions? Or do you no, want to go through the up. questions? Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm satisfied with what I've asked. So Ed, are you I'm comfortable fine. with? Well, we're still not addressing the parking. The only thing we're doing so is we're leaving the parking where it is, which is no worse or no better. Right. Well, the only the only thing that I'm thinking about is would this ever be year round? Could be. It could be. And then, if it could be year round, then parking is an issue. Right. But the way it is set up now, they have one spot that's on that property. Okay. We're not worsening it. We're not changing. They do have one legitimate parking spot on their property. If we don't, if we just go with the footprint. But you actually can get two cars in there. You can get two cars. If you yeah. really squeeze them you in can. tight, you can get two cars in there. There's enough room for two you've cars. Got, you've got about 12 feet from the garage to the front property line. Yeah, I know. Nope. I know. It's we nice. I mean, it's two little tiny cars. Yeah, we parked. We park our two cars there right now. We'll have to buy uh, some of those smart cars. My only concern is in the wintertime, and I went by there in the wintertime, and the snow was right up to the, you, the front of your cottage. I would, oh, yeah, I I would say. Uh, and that was, that's a one, two-inch snowfall. I would say Damn. if it ever does get winterized, which is a big conversation right now within the family, uh, 
and it's a controversial conversation because some people want a wind rise and some don't, it would be rented probably for a rental income a little bit of time, probably by one person. It's not a very large cottage. It's got one bathroom. And it's, it's not going to be like there's going to be two or three cars trying to get well, in there in the winter. If you want to come over here and see this picture, this might help. This is in your pack. Yeah, I was there yesterday. You can, you can, you could squeeze, you could squeeze two cars. What was concerning? Well, part you of the cars are hanging out over the. But what was concerning? Over the front property line. But that's, a, that's my only point. Yeah. Okay. What was concerning is if they infilled that space, then there would no longer be the ability to. I un I understand that. I understand that fully. All I'm saying is we're still not addressing the parking issue. That's all I'm saying. That would be true. But, but that's really not over the right? That would be true. I think it should be raised up, put the parking underneath it. And it could very well be that other houses along there but we will have to do the same thing. But as a board, you can't mandate that. No, I'm not saying okay. I got okay. mandated. So, so yeah. let's not let's move on because okay. we're just okay. we're spinning our wheels it, talking it, about something we can't mandate. It could be something we would explore with the DEC, but. The one time we did explore it, we were shut yeah, down pretty quickly, but we could explore it again. That's all I can say. I don't think you're going to get very far with it. <laughs> so let's, um, I'd like to do start, just if anybody else is, is okay, I'd like to start going down through the criteria and talking about each one and, and maybe asking questions to the applicants and making that part of the uh, findings of fact. And um, so the land in question cannot yield a, yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Reasonable return does not mean maximum return. Applicant must demonstrate practical loss of virtually all reasonable use of the land if the variance is not granted. Reasonable return is not determined by personal circumstances of the applicant. And uh, the answer they've got, if, if you've already read that into the record, um, do, does the board care to have her reread those into the record or are you? Yeah, because I think they changed. Okay, could you read what exactly what you have in here into the record, please? The whole thing? Yes, please. The unheated summer cottage at Nine Shipwreck Road was purchased by the family in 1946. Over the past 70 years, the only major update made to the building was in 1978 when a storm washed the small garage out to the road. After rescuing it, the family decided to attach the garage to the main building to create much needed sleeping space. In addition, in 1990, deteriorating windows were replaced and in 2009, the back porch was closed in to improve living conditions. This cottage sits on a lot size that is smaller than any other lot in the area. All other lots on the street are 50 feet wide, while this lot is only 40 feet wide. See attachment A. We believe this lot was originally a paper street to the beach, an extension to Burdap Street that the town ultimately decided to sell. The lot size places an extra level of burden to meet the requirements of the new character-based zoning standards. It also poses obvious restrictions to the use of the site and to our opportunity to make enhancements that would allow us to maintain a reasonable return. Okay, thank you. Um, so if I could fire some questions at you. I'm looking at this first picture of the rotting and leaking roof. Um, uh, is that from your experts that you've had a look at the property? Do, do, do you mind giving the names of who you had for contractors look at the property? The photographs? Who, who looked at the properties for you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Slocum Builders from Powell, who's built recently built a home for us, and a gentleman, uh, Greg and Sarah, had him look at it, and his name is um, Steve Flynn. Flynn. Steve Flynn. Steve Flynn. Flynn. Okay. Builders, who's done and he's work. He's got a south and He does a lot of building. Yeah, it's flimsy construction. Okay. And what their response is regarding the roof. What, what did they say about the roof? Is it, is it, re is it repairable or is it they have to take it off there and start again? There was a discussion again? about whether it <coughs> needed to be totally replaced or could it be repaired. Initially, uh, Slocum has been repairing this roof for the last three years. <laughs> and he that probably answers was the question. <laughs> uh, Lynn, when looking at it the first one. time, initially said it probably could be repaired. While Sarah and Greg were there, we had a bad rainstorm and water came pouring in. And so they brought him back, and he looked at it more closely, saw a lot of the rot, and said the roof needs to be replaced. Okay. And if you lifted it up, the roof may not even hold. 
Oh, right. I just, you, you take it right off. And well, most, I, a lot of it's going to come off when they deteriorate the chimney. And the, when, they, when they dismantle the chimney, they'll do that with some kind of a thing that comes in and pulls it all out. Well, and the, with the new codes, you're going to be required to meet the, the hurricane codes, the wind speed codes with the roof ties. So that's another whole conversation. Um, what about the uh, the chimney. Tell me about the chimney. What's the situation? The chimney uh, was looked at also in a variety of ways. It, it hasn't been functional for many years, and you can see how badly it's deteriorated. And what do you mean by not functional? Uh, you can't put a fire in it. Anymore. And if you did, what would happen? Uh, the, right. the brick, the mortar is all deteriorated. What would it cost to repair that to be we functional? Got, uh, Flynn gave us a cost. It was, I think, ten over ten thousand to repair it, and about six to re to take it out. All right, so it makes more sense to take you it out. But you want to take it out, right? Yes, we want. I would, that we want to take yeah, it out. Right. Plus, it gives you extra space. Yes, we need the space. Right. This is true. Yes. Because especially without that bump out, we now have to find space for a staircase. The the chimney comes down to a fireplace inside right now. Is that correct? Okay, so you probably have a shell up by the fireplace where water's come in over the years, yep. which would have been like a stove-type shell. That's probably completed, completely rotted out, right? Probably. I don't that would make sense. Yeah. Off, if the chim yeah, if your chimney's doing what it's doing, I've seen this before, the water is actually coming in, and whatever you had for a shell, you, you wouldn't be able to start a fire in there because you'd burn your house down because the, the actual shell that was built in there is probably gone. I just wanted to get that out there. Good, thank you. Uh, looking at the next picture, and anybody wants to jump in, feel free, but I just figured I'd start the ball rolling with the pictures. Um, that looks like uh, the old black 1940s wiring, just after knob and tube. Is that about right, or is that? Some wiring has been updated, but not all, as you okay. can see by the photograph. They put the, when they put the garage on, uh, they put it You were partially on. Okay, you partially on uh, fuses. Right. Right. Okay. Is there any knob and tube in there at all, to your knowledge? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, is it 60 amp service? Is it a 60 amp service? 16 amp. Six zero. Uh, I'm not sure. Probably is. Yeah. It probably is. I mean, standard now is at 200, but a lot of houses are at 100. But uh, and then piping. So it's electric, electrical. I'm looking at the outside wall there, right? In that picture with the with the light, uh, with the black plugs and the metal uh, uh, casing. Uh, it says, uh, "Yeah, that's electric." I jumped. I'm sorry. I'm back to the electric. That is that typical of what's around the, the entire house. Yes. The circular outlets. The old circular outlets. No, there are there are some that are. An outlet. It, it's still quite visible, but it's not circular. There are some that are that were added later. Are they? And a lot are of they the in the wall? Now we have like you know the extension cords with five things plugged in, which okay. I'm very concerned about fire hazard. They should be. Okay. Are the outlets in the wall or are they on an exposed stud, so you uh, can see? On the an exposed stud. Right. Yeah, that's what I. That's the other thing, Mr. Chair, that I wanted to get at. A lot of these cottages, I see the. Um, Outlets are on the exposed side. They're not even inside of a wall or anything. You can mm -hmm. kind of stick your finger up to the bottom of it if you wanted to. <laughs> I might get my son to do that. Um, good story. The piping, uh, is that an example of just... Uh, that, that, is, that is original to the cottage, and it's galvanized zinc. Uh, they're very, very old. Okay, and the, the, the post behind that, that looks like a relatively new post. Um, David. Is that accurate or not? What's going on there? Is that the is that the wooden one or no, is no, that that's the, uh, concrete? The whole camper on uh, concrete, concrete uh, tubes, sauna tubes. Sauna tubes, right? Okay, and and that was they were not, not really an issue. Of just that's what they were all built on. But right. uh, okay, um, and then in behind that grating there, is that where the deck is? In behind the where? See that where the where the white uh, lattice. lattice is. Is that where the deck is? Is that the deck? Yeah, that's the outside. That's the that's the back. That's toward the street. Okay. Back. Next page. I'm looking at the the doorways. Um, 
It's the old style knob. I mean, I, from looking at that doorway, mm. the, it's pretty tired. Um, <laughs> the, the cottage is sh uh, obviously shifted to one side. The first picture of the chimney also shows you on the hearth. There's a brick that's just off. Oh, that's um, the side of the and the, the doorway, the door frame is now pulling away from the floor. So it's, we're going to have to shore up the whole thing and level it again, obviously. Right. So the question then is going to become whether or not they can raise it, level it, flatten it out. But what do you got? Two by eight construction, two by ten construction. Do you know what's under there? Do you know what the beams are that are our support beams out there? I, I'm not sure. Okay. Do you, do you know what condition they're in? I'm not a contractor. <laughs> you know condition? Did either of the contractors oh, the talk about that? that are in good condition. No, the, they the said the support, the support beams on the bottom are in good condition. Okay. And I talked to a mover that said that. Uh, said that he felt that the camp could uh, stand to be lifted. That was the other question as to whether it was going to fall apart, but he said that it uh, looked sound enough, sound enough to be actually lifted. So how high? Easier Did he say how high? Yeah, I, I, I asked him about going up to, you know, 15 feet, and I told him we were at 12-2, so. He said no problem? He said no problem. Okay, without, the well, without the brick. <laughs> no problem, but <laughs> well, yeah. low cost. More expense, more expense. You can't raise it easily with that chimney and fireplace there. Obviously. Yeah, I don't know. You could raise it all over the fireplace. Get it out of there. Yeah. I think we've got enough finding facts on that one. Um, don't you? I'm feeling fairly good about the fact that I guess my question is, if I'm looking at this from a practical point of view, has this thing lost its usable? Has it lived out its life? And in my opinion, the problem building itself has lived out its life for a variety of reasons. For safety reasons, for flood reasons, for uh, pipe reasons, for the, the electrical reasons, for the fireplace reasons. Um, I think you're going to find out once you start going that they're going to tell you you need to tear the whole thing down. Uh, that won't be the first time that's happened. Um, and th that we asked about that, but DEP said we can't, you can't do that in well, that. That depends on depends on the circumstances, but we'll, just so you know that that you might get that conversation. But I think from a practical point of view, it's seen its uh, its its useful life expire. And the question is, does that leave a reasonable return? Well, the reasonable return, I believe, especially from the most recent articles we've been receiving, is that it's designed as a cottage, and that would be a reasonable return. Putting a tent there is not a reasonable return. So I would argue that, that and I, I don't want to advocate for the clients, but I, the, the people that are before us, but at the same vein, I give them credit for coming here and they don't know the rules, they don't know the procedures, they don't, they've been, it's not, this is technically a, a quasi-court, at the same vein, we are still a town and we try to work together when we can. And I'm, so I'm, I'm not trying to advocate for them, but I do believe that I don't have the stress they have. So based on what I see, I think that meets the first requirement. So my position on that is, number one, is met. Do you want to vote for all of uh, Yes, I'd like to have each person comment. So I'm voting yes, number one, is met. And I start with you. I'm normally the worst advocate of this and will not normally vote for it. But seeing some of the things and knowing the things with the chimney, uh, I think you've, you've met it there as well as uh, some of the other things. I mean, the roof's not going to withstand, so it's not going to be much longer. I would normally have a very tough thing doing this. If you weren't agreeing to, go, to just go up in the footprint, I would say no. But I think with all you've provided to us, with all this additional information, with the piping, it, a lot Could of these things look very unsafe. Could they even get insurance? It would be very difficult. Yeah. So He's an insurance agent. A, lo a lot of these things would be very difficult. They got to they got to be fixed, and I don't think it's a reasonable return. I think do, what you're doing is going to be able to be met in my mind on this one. I wouldn't normally say that, but you've given us a lot of additional information. Okay, so your position is a vote of yes. I I agree. I mean, if if anything happened to this place right now, if it burned down for any reason, I. I don't even know whether they could rebuild. It could take two or three houses with it. They, well, no, they said 
uh, DP said that if the property were, uh, t were lost due to storm, that would be the only way to rebuild. We didn't ask about fire. We didn't ask about that. So there, so if you had a fire and destroyed the property, nobody would ever buy the lot because you couldn't do anything with it. Nobody, exactly. yeah. Well, when after t after going through this process, we thought we had a very valuable piece of property, but we realized it's a lot less valuable than it was with all the restrictions. Mostly anybody would want that property would be for the location. Well, thank you, because that's the another bu that's The building another and the limitations of, of the property are very limiting. That very. That's a, that's a very honest finding fact. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so, Ed, your position is uh, above the F. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I appreciate all the extra information that you guys provided for us. Um, I, mean, I will vote yes as long as you know going up. I think the bump out. I was kind of with the board that we would. I would have voted no, but um, with going up, yes. Okay. So uh, just to make it clear, uh, number one, uh, just a show of hands as to the yeses and noes is none. So the number one is answered, and we believe that it does meet the standards to allow for uh, th th this does. This cannot yield a reasonable return as it is sitting. And I, again, a fire issue to me, the other houses are really, that's a big issue because it could take out numerous, it's so close. Okay, number two is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property. Uh, and this crit criteria applies to property, not people and or uncommon condition <coughs> are not shared by the neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Blaze, do you want to start with this one? Yeah, it definitely is. You want me to read that one? Uh, currently, there are several. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you. Would you read that? I'm sorry. I, yes, please. Currently, read there are several uh, major structural, mechanical, and electrical deficiencies of the house that need urgent attention. The roof is leaking and rotting in several areas. We have made efforts to repair it over the last few years, but according to building professionals, it now needs to be completely replaced. The fireplace and chimney have been deteriorating and have not been functional for many years. At this point, we need to have both dismantled and removed. Some of the walls and doorways are showing signs of movement, making it apparent that the building structure needs to be leveled and shored up. Plumbing and electrical in the building are antiquated and need to be replaced to meet c current requirements. Plumbing pipes are original to the cottage and are galvanized. The one bathroom and kitchen out of this house are also in need, desperate need of being renovated and updated to today's use and function levels. While making all of the repairs nord noted above, family would like to increase the living space of the house, which our small lot currently prohibits. The request for variance is, I'll just read the first one, okay. raising the roof ridge. In replacing the rotting roof, we'd like to raise the ridge of the roof by four and a half feet without raising the height of the exterior walls. See attachment, it's really attachment B. We would also add shed dormers, creating a story and a half structure as we understand is allowed by code and zoning. The new roof and dormers would then support our effort to come into greater compliance with the aesthetic requirements of the new character code zoning recently adopted for Higgins Beach. And I, I, don't, I don't need to read the next one. No, nope, uh, because we eliminated that section as an as agreement here. Mr. I agree with this 100%. I mean, it's, it's definitely in disrepair. It's got to be fixed. And it meets, meets the requirements as far as I'm concerned. I agree with Mr. Blaze. I mean, you've shown that the house is deteriorating, and you know, especially if you're going to have renters in there, I think it's important to have it safe. Yeah, yeah I, I would say it's due to the unique circumstances of the property, as Mr. Longstaff had pointed out. You had, what did you have it in the flood zone? The I think you came up with three different things that it was in. <laughs> flood zone, it's in a special flood hazard area. It's in the uh, erosion hazard area. It's in the uh, frontal dune, and it's in the um, shoreland zone. Plus, they can't move back. Plus, they can't move back to the dunes, speed correct? Speed plus, they can't move backwards in that 75 feet because they're prohibited by DEP, correct? They, right. They can't. They can't move any further away, for obvious reasons, zoning and DEP. Um, they can't move forward, they can't move sideways because it's a 40-foot lot. And, and what I wanted to bring up as far as the uniqueness of the lot, 
I think all of the other stuff is good information, but it doesn't really address the uniqueness of the lot. The one th only thing you needed to say there is it's a 40-foot wide lot. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Thank you. And that's why I wanted to get his comments in about the other things, too, because no, not only is it a 40-foot wide lot, but you've oh, he got every other variable possible sure. going he against you. Mr. Chair. As far as the unique experiences due to the unique circumstances of the property, uh, Mr. Longstaff said it perfectly. I think also what you wrote is perfect. Um, I have no problem with number two being met. So all in favor of number two being met. That's unanimous. Okay, number three. The variance of variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And that means characteristics of the neighborhood such as density, development, large open space, and, or rural. Would you like to start all the way down there? Um, again, I mean, I think if we're just going up and not bumping out, I think that's great. And um, I think any improvement that you make is going to make it nice and the character. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Plus, they're trying to bring it into compliance with the new uh, character zoning. I would agree. It, it, I mean, you folks have stated several times that you're looking to increase the character of the neighborhood. I mean, even when the putting of the garage underneath, what you said was basically it looked like crap. So, I mean, you're, you're definitely taking into account the character of the neighborhood and trying to do everything you can to withstand that. So we appreciate that because that's a big thing that we have to look at is we don't want one house down there that sticks out like we have one already. I know. There's already. I wasn't going to say it, but <laughs> I know exactly which one it is. But it's we're looking to try to keep people in realm a little bit so that things look unified down there. And I appreciate the fact that you folks are taking that under concern and you've made great efforts to let us know that. Can I lock down? <laughs> so, um, so. Uh, I got to tell you, I think you've done a pretty good job trying to meet the standards of the of the new code. I think the design is attractive, so I, I think you, I, I think that it helps. I think you have done the best you can based on the reality of the code, so I support this. So number three, all in favor that number three is met. Yes. And uh, that's unanimous. Number four. The hardship is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner of the property. Hardship must be caused by an imposition of zoning restriction, not by action taken by the property owner. And so basically, the, the, the rules have all changed. These properties were allowed to be built back 100 years ago. You couldn't do this if you wanted to anymore. So I have no problem with saying that the hardship is not action. And the house is just tired. It's like anything. Uh, I'll let the board go with their comments. Well, I think we should still have something out there for the finding of facts. Um, the hardship's not taken by the owner or applicant. As a matter of fact, I think you folks have said you've had the roof repaired three times. So you're taking actions to actually prevent some of it from happening. So you haven't encouraged any of it. You haven't just let, been letting it fall down around itself, which is appreciated if, because otherwise we could say it was an action that you took because you just didn't take care of the house. But you folks have been trying to take care of the house and get it repaired, so. Well stated. Mr. Crockett did a pretty good job there. Yeah, and seldom I say yep. <laughs> I agree. Okay, all in favor of number four being met. Okay, so uh, I'd like to move that we approve the request eliminating the section regarding uh, expansion that we only allow for the footprint and that it need to meet the, the current uh, codes for elevation. If they choose to meet the current and future codes, that's fine, but the current, the new codes for elevation to be out of the flood zone, uh, expecting that this is going to exceed the 50% trigger, which it will. And then what happens going back? I'd just like to ask a question. Uh, you made a statement before that that you said that the DEP wouldn't allow you to tear it down and rebuild? 
The house oh. right down at the end of the street that was torn down and I rebuilt. I don't know how. I, we asked. Yeah, that was two years ago. We asked that yeah. question about <laughs> and maybe they're not in the number of restricted zones that we're in. There, it is a, literally yeah, three. Zone. It's three houses down from us, and it was torn down and rebuilt brand new. We asked that question, but again. What they say? They said that. It, uh, no, it's, uh, it, it, was not the, uh, a, it was not a, a good idea. In the footprint. And that uh, any details need to be dealt with that, that the uh, code enforcement officer has as the plans are developed. Would you need to see a more defined plan design or for height? When they when their building permit comes in, we'll deal with all of that stuff. I just want to make sure that we're clear on what the request is. Um, according to the diagram attachment B, it shows a four foot six which is what you've put in your narrative here. Um, I don't think it matched what I originally had in my summary. I think I was three, three inches short. <laughs> so I want to make sure that we, when we amend the decision that it's for four foot six of additional height to the ridge. Is that correct? Is that what we're asking? Do you remember what yours was, Ryan? I, I had it written differently. I went from 15 foot six, which was your current, which your existing height, to 19.9, so that's four foot three inches, if my math is correct. Okay. And, and the diagram clearly shows four foot six. So I'm not sure whether that was an earlier drawing that I was going off, or if I read the read the diagram wrong. I just want to make sure that we get the right number. We'll default with a higher number. We'll default with so a higher number. Now we've now we've got to resume our work with Travis and really get down to specific plans, footprints, yeah. and floor plans, and all of that. And okay. I think it might have been on the prior path. Okay. It might have been. So the, f the four po four point six is, or the four feet six inches is raising the roof. Right. The ridge. Right? The ridge. The ridge. Yep. He was just defining something that was a Allow package. A half a story. <laughs> well, the door it well, allows the you. Then when you put the dormers on, then you do get head, head space. For How sleep. much headroom are you going to have that? Pretty good, I think. It. Okay. Now you mean? Oh, no. With those dormers, I think you have full head space out to in the dormers, where the dormers are. Where the dormers are, but now he's got a... For sure people are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. yeah, it won't okay. give it. Thank you. Let me, um, so basically, uh, my motion's on the table. Anybody uh, want to second that? Second. Okay, uh, any additions or changes to that, emo that motion? Okay. All in favor of the motion? It's unanimous. So uh, tomorrow, I believe now, uh, yeah, I'm available tomorrow. So the next few days, just give the office a call. We're approving. We're approving this for you as without the bump out. I believe you will find that um, going through the remainder of the process will be fairly simple. But my advice would be have somebody that knows what they're doing go with you. Um, it'll be a lot easier, and this is going to be very easy for them to see. So we'll understand it. Okay, best of luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care. They coordinated well today. appeal uh, by uh, Elena, Elena Frank of 3 Griffin Road. This is map U33, parcel 51C. And uh, somebody here would like to take the microphone, state your name, address, and what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Good evening. My name is Elena uh, and Ryan. We are owners of um, 3 Griffin property in Scarborough. 
Uh, today we are here to represent our uh, proposal for future improvements of our property. Back in 2011, Ryan and I, we purchased a house, which was in a very sad condition, but due to the budget constraints and everything, that was only one thing possible. But like I said, we took a price uh, in the renovation of this uh, property, and we did a tremendous amount of updates, electrical, plumbing, and uh, new windows, siding, roof, and uh, Going forward with all of those um, projects, we considered uh, the needs and the style of our neighborhood uh, to be able to blend in and merge with the neighborhood. Um, so by doing all those renovations, we were able to achieve our goal and we um, increased the property value, fun functionality, aesthetic look, and um, all the above. Um, we have received a lot of uh, thank you from our neighbors and for our improvements and they wished us the best to continue on. Going forward, we would like to um, add a shed, which is 12 by 12 for proper storage of our uh, lawn equipment and the garden tools. As I love gardening personally and when we bought the house there was nothing planted, so um, that's one of my uh, to do projects to make it all pretty, but unfortunately I did find myself storing the lawn equipment and the gardening tools along the house is not aesthetically appealing. So we are in a great need of uh, proper storage for this equipment as well as the garage which would be 26 by 26 um, to um, add to our property for proper storage of the vehicle and the um, tools uh, for Ryan as he likes to do the woodwork and uh, as his hobby and um, as, as well to blend in our neighbors on the Orchard Street as well as on um, Pine Point and uh, around us on our street ha do have a garage and some of the neighbors did express the need um, to build one too so they will be going forward with the same request in the future. Um, considering the fact that Mr. Isberry is developing this street, um, I think it would be the best uh, for us to go forward with this type of um, improvement same simultaneously to decrease the amount of um, inconvenience for everybody and simultaneously improve the value of the property and the static look. And uh, the last, um, we would like to add a small uh, porch, front porch, just to tie it all together. Uh, to bring the static look back to the street and the property. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Longstaff, anything to add on this? This is different than I, um, th than I understood it to be. In, in what way? Um, I thought it was more just about a garage on that line. No, there's actually three, three components we wanted to add to the structure. And as I said in my staff comments, um, they were faced with the challenge of having a, a non-conforming existing structure and wanting to expand that non-conforming structure, um, which requires the miscellaneous appeal. Unfortunately, that has to go to the planning board for an advisory opinion first and then come back to the board. And so that's the stage that they're at now. Um, if they wanted to modify the inside of the house, that would not be a problem. They've done, that's not considered an expansion. Um, but adding the garage, the shed, and the porch is, and is as silly as it may seem, that it has to come to the board for your approval on that. That's the way the ordinance is written, so and that's that what they're here to request. And what tripped it is a TVC change of a few years back? Whenever the zoning was changed from, I don't even know whether, I haven't gone back in history to find out what it was before, but yeah, the TVC zone does not allow single family dwellings at all, period. It's multifamily dwellings for residential uses um, and, and maybe some townhouses, I can't remember, but single family dwellings are not allowed, two family dwellings are not allowed. So, so when you get into the TVC, the other TVC districts, I think two and three, and maybe four, one or more of those districts will allow single family dwellings, but not the TVC town and village center district by itself. But this house was there long before the zoning exactly. was changed. Exactly. So it's 
It's a and grandfathered, it's what, the, the classic grandfathered house. It was and there and pretty straightforward. And I take it it meets all the setback requirements, the yes. everything. Yes. So if anybody wanted to do this in another area, all they would do is come to you and get a permit. Exactly. Pay $25. Yes. I've got just one question. <laughs> Are we going to refund their $250 fee to come before us? <laughs> you know, Ed, sometimes you put it perfectly. It's, it's absolutely correct. Um, <laughs> Mr. Blaze is very wealthy, so he uh, might just kick that in. The only thing I would add, Mr. Chairman, is that they did go to the planning board for the advisory opinion. They got a favorable opinion from the planning board. And as the zoning ordinance states, the zoning board cannot go against the planning board's advisory opinion without good cause. So there and there is just no good cause. <laughs> we could spend a lot of time with this and follow all the rules. I would like to know that we just go right to the end if the board is comfortable with it. I do not see the reason of doing this. is just a simple, straightforward issue. If the board wants to, I'll go either way. It doesn't matter to me. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that we approve it as requested. So move. I, have not, I haven't opened the audience yet, but if there's no letters and no, in the audience, there's no letters, no phone calls, let me open the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this? Uh, no. <laughs> um, <Good> no. <laughs> uh, I'd move that we, it's just, this is so a formality. Move. It's just a, it's second. a formality. I don't think so you, do you move to any second? Maybe? I move to that second. So right now we've got a motion on the table. If somebody disagrees with me, feel free to jump in. But I just don't see the reason of going through all the work for something that's so basic. You don't, you don't want to have the questions on record? I don't have a problem with that, unless the board does. I mean, this is entered on the record, the application. The application right? is. So. is the, we're, what we're basically saying, and I'll say it, is part of the approval is that we're taking this information as face value, and this is going on the record as face value, and the planning board's recommendation, which I cannot in any way see how I could find anything to overturn that decision. Right their position on it. So based on that alone, I just don't think there's any reason to do it other than that. I'm uncomfortable with the board though. Whatever the board wants. So we gotta move the table it's all on the table as a motion. Anybody second. and second. So the discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Three opposed? Uh, no I can I mean I haven't really That's okay, it's up to you. I haven't gone over this stuff so I don't know what I'm really it seems like we're just kind of rushing through this to me, so maybe I'm just missing something. Um, well, well, let me slow down. Just we voted on it, but let me slow it down just a bit. This is just a technicality because the zone changed three years ago. They put the TV season. They had to go to the planning board because it's a single-family home and a TV zone, and for whatever reason, you can have multi-family homes there, but you can't have a single-family home. There are other single-family homes on that street. But but we couldn't just go through the questions quickly? We just, I don't see any reason. I, it's up to the board. I, that's why I asked the board. And I didn't see anybody <coughs> say anything other than said this, so that's why. So I, I'll just ask for the vote again. And you can vote no, that's okay. I'll just, I, I guess I'll just abstain then. Okay, that's fine. So you can abstain. We have a form. You can. Okay. okay. So if you're not happy, Voice okay. that yeah. to right, the chairman. Go down do you want to go through the questions? Yeah, we, yeah. Let's go through the I, I questions. I just think then. we should. It, we, okay. we do yeah, for everything else. Just go through the questions. Sure. So what happens to this? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull back my motion. Would you pull back my second? Your second. I'll pull back my motion. You're pulling back your second. Yeah. So we're back to ground zero. Temporarily. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just read through uh, the item and you can just answer it, okay? Sure. Um, I'm just going to get there. There's, there's no item there. You have to oh, read yeah. oh, I thought they wrote the answers down. You, no. Okay. They, they wrote a description, but these are the standards okay. that, that need to be asked. All right. So there we go. The proposed use will not create unsanitary and unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, conditions to the air or water, other aspects of its design or operation? No. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when they're added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. But no. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. 
I just say it verbally so it's not right. No. Uh, produce use does not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. No. Produce use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood subject to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. No. That'd be yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Be yes. yes. <laughs> There's no impact on that. It's a trick question. It's a trick question. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. You're not in the flood zone. No. Uh, the applicant, you, you own the property? Um, if we do something ridiculous, you could pay for it. <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing use of the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. You're going to live there, right? Yeah, we live there. Okay. Uh, my motion, uh, again, is to approve as requested. Move. Discussion on the motion. Again, just to back up the findings, this is a garage, a shed. And a, and a front porch right. for residential use. And everything is met. If this was in any other zone, it would be fine. And, and it was a favorable use. finding from the and favorable it's finding from the planning board. And, yeah. and if anybody can think of a reason to, to deny the planning board, I can. So that's my motion. All in favor? <coughs> Four. There you go. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I want to get you cat going. <laughs> just move forward. <coughs> I just think it's cheap. Keep momentum going. Okay, the next appeal is from a special exception from Angela Grover, 176 Broad Turn Road, this is map R251A. And uh, if you'd like to take the microphone and uh, state your name and address, which I can assume is Angela Grover. Yes. Uh, okay. So feel to explain what you're trying to accomplish, and we'll go from there, all right? Um, I live at 176 Broad Turn Road, and I have a cabinet business um, to sale, and I want to take our detached garage and convert it into a place where I can just display the cabinet so people can come there and just be able to see them, touch them. Anything. Um, there's nothing will change on the outside. Um, everything will stay the same. Just the inside. I'll be using it just to house the cabinet. Can you say house the cabinets? Yeah, you know just to have a few displays there for people to look at. Okay. Do, do you currently meet people at home or at their I homes? I don't. Or not currently. This was a startup in 2015. Mm -hmm. And we just bought the house in June of this year. So I decided I will start there and will hopefully start there in the garage. And so it's just a startup, so I want to be able to get going with the business. Okay. So I thought I'd use start with a garage okay. and convert it. Do you carry a specific line or are you a... Uh, yep, I'm a reseller. Okay. Yep. Of, of multiple lines or just one line? Or? One line, yeah. Um, um, I'm just looking up the definition of uh, uh, home occupation. Rules uh, regarding that. No, office, not that. Do you want me to find the definition for you? Not the definition, but the requirements for home occupation. Okay, so you're in the performance standards section. Yeah. my book. Make it easy, thank you. Right, let's just go right through the home occupation standards and we'll come back to the special exception. Uh, okay, so uh, the occupation of the profession shall be carried out wholly uh, within the principal residence or within the building accessory there too. And you're saying you're just going to be doing this in your garage? Exactly, yeah. Is your garage heated or is it? It's not heated at this time, but I was planning on putting a pellet stove in there. Okay. Um, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. So this is a new business and you're just testing the waters with it? Exactly, yeah. No more than one person who is a not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Correct. Just do it yourself. Just myself at the time. 
Uh, exterior signage per, uh, permitted uh, with the home occupation sign provisions under section um, uh, 12 uh, sign regulations, section subsection E. That's uh, well, you're allowed with a, three, a six square foot sign, three by two sign. Right. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. Is that what you want? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to put it down in the appropriate location. And you can have an open sign on it, or you can have a, how are you going to? Um, I'm going to do by appointment only to start. And so, yeah. so what are you going to do if somebody just drives in, they see the sign, they drive in, right? Well, seeing the sign, um, obviously I'll be marketing it um, through you know, newspapers and um, direct mailers and different things. So they can contact me, and I can make an appointment. Is this sign going to be like a phone call, a phone number? Is this sign yeah. going to be a phone number or a exactly. web address? Yep, um, basically probably just the uh, name of the business and the phone number. Okay. Um, you're not having any exterior displays? You're not having truckloads no. delivered? There's nothing going to be delivered there? No, if, um, if there is an order, um, they would deliver it to the house, and I would put it into the garage until it's either picked up or I deliver it to the residents. Okay, walk me through that. Uh, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. But um, uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, dust, uh, odors, heat, or glare. And the traffic generated by such a occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create the uh, traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the neighborhood. Right, that's correct. Okay. And what about your parking? Explain, uh, explain your parking situation, your driveway. And okay. Um, from the road on broad turn to just the house is 95 feet so that driveway is actually further with the, the garage so I have all of that room plus I have a secondary a side um, driveway where people can park as well uh, with a separate entrance or just a hammerhead you mean like it's a just a side yeah I mean it's just um, so it looks like an R um, Small letter R. Just go, the driveway goes straight and then on to the left. There's just an extra parking spot okay. or two. All right. Um, you're not using 20% of the, the property. Have you done the math on that? That's fine. Um, and <coughs> for the uh, limitation, the total area devoted to retail sales limits to 400 square feet. It must be fully enclosed within a building. So, how many square feet is the, the garage? I think I saw it's that somewhere. I believe it's a, yeah, it's a 20 by 20. Garage. garage. Mm -hmm. They're under, they're under, they're under the requirements, okay. And um, it's secondary, it's so necessary to, you know, okay. Uh, it can include retail sales subject to the following limitations. We talked about the 400 feet, the sale product is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, and seafood caught or harvested off the premises by persons who reside. In the dwelling unit, or by one employee, employees. Um, so, the, can you so she's this? not selling the prod. She's not selling the product on the premise. She's displaying the product on the premise. She's displaying it. So there's a difference. She's not selling. She's not taking cash at the premises and selling them the cabinet and letting them fuck off. Demonstration only. She's a consultant, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. She's a reseller. So she's demonstrating the project product. So it's no, there's no sales on the pro, on the uh, on the on the uh, property. Under the assumption that she's not having things delivered. So if she's having things delivered to her house and they're picking it up, wouldn't that be sales? No. Where does the sale take place? No. The, they, the, the cabinets aren't going to be delivered to you. They're going to be delivered to the job site. Correct. Not it could be either. Yeah. No, it just depends on where. But they are if they're the delivered to you, then you're taking them to the job site. Or they're picking them up. Or they're picking them up. So are you selling product at the garage? My understanding was there was not sales at no, the garage. No, the, they are going to look. They're going to be able to look at it. They, if they want to place an order, I will place the order for them, and then it can be delivered to their residence. It, I could hold on to it for them. Um, it just depends. I, I think you're going to be caught having to do direct ship um, because uh, I don't think the. the uh, that's why I wanted to go right to this immediately, is because I, it doesn't really allow for that to be. Otherwise, you're retail, you're retail establishment. Second, you start selling things other than those items. Unless you're building um, cabinets. I am building them. They are coming in, not put together. There, I will have to put them together. 
unless they it does somebody say, on site who it says products and articles produced, assembled, or processed premises. Right. It's amazing how words can, can change yeah, things assembled. back and forth. They're not assembled, so they come no, in. No, they're not assembled. Flat boxes. Exactly. So they have that choice. If they have um, a contractor that wants to put them together, then have at it. They can put them together, but I would be putting them together. No, I just I just bought some together. We don't care. Let's move on. No, uh, <laughs> question is, I care about how they come, though. Some of them came complete. Some of them came folded up. I just, well, I don't know that the statement is necessarily accurate that the cabinets don't I need to get that clarified. Most of the time I've seen cabinets come in both ways. I've yet to see a place where they just come in boxes and you put them together other than... The way the that's company I use, that's all, that's all they do. So it's strictly they sell, flat. Whoever they're selling to throughout the United States, they're saying un, un, they're all unassembled. You have to assemble them. Okay. And I'm getting that on the record for a reason. Because to be candid with you, that's an important issue. If they were coming in assembled, that doesn't allow, that doesn't meet that requirement. Not at all. Okay. Uh, even Home Depot now is even shipping doors and cabinets separate with the hinges so you have to put them on. And I just need to get it clarified. Um, so thank you. Um, you're not doing more very well. That's okay. All right. So let's go back uh, to uh, the four eyes. On him and okay. So I'm going to go through these really quickly, really okay? Uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary and unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of the design or operation. And the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic <coughs> in the vicinity. Yeah. What kind of vehicles come? Is it, is it a tractor trailer truck that comes in or is it like a UPS or? Um, probably a tractor trailer. I mean, if they have to drop off products in there. And uh, they they could turn around and the trail? That give us um, I believe they would have to park on the road and um, forklift it off. I think it's, I'm not sure how they... Most places don't have forklifts. Okay, maybe it's not a forklift. They, it comes off from a pallet, so however they take... Most yeah, times when you're getting direct ship, you, have to, you actually have to have something to, uh, at yeah. your site. No, they, they do have something. Um, okay. Yeah, some of the trucks now come with the lift that goes down and they have a pallet jack right there. Lifts, yeah. okay, here, here's what I'm worried about. Yeah. You're okay with it? Well, how do you get them now? You're, you're in the business now, right? It's a startup. You had a delivery yet? Not yet. No. But it would be on the road. On the road. And get a Have you seen delivery. a delivery made? Um, at other places. Um, I was at the time. But it was on a pallet when. So Got a question. I don't how, did, how did the pallet get off the truck? Yeah. The proposed use not create public uh, safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require substantially greater degree of fire and municipal protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. And you're saying in the wintertime, on that road, you're okay with a protection of truck park on the road and bring it up. As long as you're okay with that, I just. It's my understanding long. that product. It's very different. It's very different with a person getting something from the old right. in your home. And maybe the question, Chairman. Maybe the question is how how often would a delivery come? Um, 
Again, it's a startup. Um, right now. How often would you think you'd have a box truck as a trailer truck? It's probably not going to be very common you're going to have a trailer truck delivering that much product, right? Well. Oh, yeah. It is, it's a good question. How is the question? Maybe. I'll be candid with you. I don't have a question. The issue of I really don't know right now. I want to let you guys know where I'm standing. I don't have oh. information. Hey, hold on one second. I don't know anything about the product. I could affect the neighbors. I don't want to see this push through just because. And I, I don't know whether or not it's four trucks, a pallet truck, a double trailer truck. I don't know whether or not it's a UPS truck. The only thing I know is I don't think it's and that's more important than anything. I think what I would like to go make a decision, a plan, what's going to happen, how it works, what your what your business model is, how, how with a company flyer that says those things you order, <coughs> going from experience, the thing you order that drops drops your flyers that you have, So I have when I contacted the company because um. For for the people, he said because I wanted to see, like what shipping charges pay. They said it would be a tractor trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I would it would be a trailer because you're. So I don't. This is I guess comes back to my point. Okay to not know. I just don't can't. We don't have enough information to make a decision. So I'm going to move to table for more information. And I would be looking for is how the company works, models, but, but other other distributors. Uh, is really going to do what 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 is reasonable for month is reasonable. <coughs> what does this really look like? And I know you don't have those answers here. And I'm not trying to stop you. As a matter of fact, I'm really trying to give you a fighting chance to prove. I don't know. Mr. Chairman, you already said one shipment a month. She's already answered some of your questions, so I think you're being a little bit. Maybe. I just want to bring okay. that up. You're, okay. you're not listening to her answers either. Uh, that may be true, but I'm, I'm, I'm moving to table for more information. There's a second. And if there is, if there isn't, we'll be moving to the discussion. Second. So I move for more information. Second, undebatable. Anybody uh, all in favor of tabling for more information? Three, four. I, I, okay. I think what would be helpful if, if, if you get, the, get us some pictures of the area so we can see what. I did get pictures. I did a Google map of the, the lot. My actual firm, I'm on Broadway. Can you I can't really tell my. Away. I'm not on any curve. Uh, I read the packet. That my, my concern is my concern is, is is what is this going to be? In other words, it is not zoned. Or a, it, it's a residential zone. Oh, it's actually oh. not. It's a farm. Yeah. Um, but, but I think what I would do, i tell you what to do, but what I would do is I'd get the package program, how it works, lay it out to the product A is located on the web, it how it works, the package has flat boxes, they drop off. No big deal. They drive whatever vehicle it takes. They have their own equipment. They drop it off. And, 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 or, at least, that, whatever. The only answer I don't know is if it's a cliff or if it's a drop thing, but I know that it's going to come on the tractor trailer, and I believe it's whatever, however they get it from the tractor trailer to my house. I don't know. I know the rest of that. Yeah, I can't tell from the picture. I can't tell from the side, but it looks like it has a turn in there. I don't know if that goes out. Does, does that go out into the road? Is that like a turn around? So the tree star can turn in there and go back out to the road, so if someone came in with a you know, oh. pusher drive. It would be difficult to get a track. But you would not be able to park right on this road. It's a mile or two away. Um, right. But I really can't. I'm not going to be bothering anybody. Well, I know, but what I really can't is like, 
picture this and picture show this a little bit better and where you where you think the trailer is going to possibly be that's going to impact traffic coming so we what the road looks like down there. I can't try to Google it, but it's all wooded on. It is all wooded. Um, right across the street, um, they're two acre lots. They're my area right away there. I'm not going to attack It's been tabled at this point for really further discussion. It has been tabled, but I'm just giving you something to just give us more information so that when you come back. So you need more pictures? I think it would be helpful. I'm sorry. But I would get a full package of how it all works. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm really interested in how often the deliveries are going to be. I still well, have to think it's a startup. I don't know. I yeah, mean, I think it, it's someone who it's commutes it's that road, who you know, who lives on that road. I mean, people go really fast, and I think I especially know. in the winter, you know, and I think a neighbor, you know, home occupation is one thing, but if suddenly the neighbor starts seeing a tractor trailer every week, I think then I think it kind of goes against what the zoning is there. I think. To me, if, if you were saying that you were running a business without having any deliveries at your home, bang, approved. Well, I'd have no problem. But is there a way I can do that then? I mean, that's another option. I mean, I could right have now. them well, sent it's, to it's a warehouse. It's like been tabled, unfortunately, so we're, we're done with it right now. Okay. What, what I would recommend you, if you want to do that, bring it back that way. And that, but I asked that question very bluntly, and you said, no, you were going to have it. And that's why I asked that question. So I'm not trying to make it difficult for you. I'm really not. But I also don't want to just say no because I don't understand it, and I'm not willing to accept that you don't know. So that's for me, and that's why I voted to table it. I, I can talk to Mr. Longstaff and, and kind of get my thoughts to him, and then you can talk to him and, and get a better feel. But what, what, just again, if any board member wants to kick in, I'm looking for, ideally, that you don't have deliveries at your house, number one. That would be f my preference, because I don't know what that looks no. like long term. If you have to have deliveries at your house, fine. I want to know how it works. I want to know. That's how I was just going to start it, because I mean, with a startup, I'm not going to go out and spend money on a warehouse if it's not going to work. Right, but you're only going to be doing. I'm assuming you're buying it for somebody specifically and then bringing it directly to their property. That is going to happen. So that's but sometimes two Sometimes I have to, it just depends on what they want to do. Good point. Yeah, that, that's, that's two, two, now you get two trucks going. Because you gotta have a truck that's going to take it. So now you, and furthermore, that's, what you, that's the kind of thing I think you need to clarify. The other thing is, I do think we're pushing the envelope with assembly. I don't know many cabinets that are just flat. I mean, other than buying something that's stable. They'll come flat. That's about the only thing I know that comes flat. I mean, the other things. So that's those are the issues that I need clarified. For me, board members, any other comments? None. Okay. Thank you. Uh, You'll be first on the agenda in, in January, ma'am, so you know. Next is a limited reduction of yard size appeal by Warren Kristen Valdmanis, uh, uh, 35 was Winslow Homer Road, so this is map U19, parcel 16. Uh, it's so appeal number 2595. And uh, welcome, state your name, sir. Uh, Walter Wilson from Design Company, representing Bald Manis in this application to the board. Um, this, I'm, I'm, I'm a little forgetful here for a moment on this job as to what packet was sent to the board as far as the floor plan goes. And the reason I say this is this is a, a job that I'm drawing on almost every other day and I can't remember what point I gave you a plan as to what it showed. Um, I moved the table. <laughs> if you want, Walt, do you want mine? Could I take a look at yeah. it, please? Brian knows where we're up here, so we want to stuff. <laughs> yes, you can take them over there. Just put it back to you. Know? You can 
awful lot of paperwork for when they reduction the yard size. Okay, excuse me for that. Uh, you haven't been at the uh, survey site plan of the property. Um, with a house way up at the street side, with a long lot that goes down the marginal way overlooking the water. And you can tell by the survey the house is real close to the, to the west of, to the left property line. That's the existing house as it is today. Well, footprint wise. And what we would like to do on the back of the house in your packet is to put a porch on the back of the house. It involves a little bit of infringement on the 15 foot setback, a triangular piece, three and a half feet out, going down to zero, down to zero in that little footprint. And that's the only thing we're here for as far as any reduction goes that little triangular piece. Now, the reason for that triangular piece on the porch deck, that end of the house has a big bay build out in the back of the house. And from the inside of the house right now, there is no access to the yard out in the back. And there's no existing porch on the house right now. So you, you go in the house and you get this nice house down in this section of the town, and there's no deck, there's no view. Also, the grade from the house going to the back drops 10 feet down to the rear of the house. And the porch we're putting on does two things. It gives outdoor space from the first floor, and by grading with the foundation wall under the porch, we can raise the grade up to create a more usable back space on the side of the property. Now, if you do that and put a deck on that looks right, it should wrap around to meet the character of the house with the bay window. And that creates that little piece of deck encroaching on the sideline. And that's why we want that uh, little uh, sideline variance to put that outside porch to make it look compatible with the design of the house. Which since the last page. The very last page? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but what portion is two of the Yeah. It's easiest to see it on. That piece right there. There's there's the setback line. There's the eleven and a half and this top right here encroaches. This part right here? Also, just out of curiosity, the garage, looks like the garage isn't even on the property. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's not. <laughs> <That's> not <laughs> it never has, well, it never has been on the property, but it's not in the location that it started in. <laughs> 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 it started over on the other side and then got shifted to that side back who knows how long ago, but it's never been on the property. Why bother you? <laughs> okay, so um, typical proud snack. <laughs> Why don't we go through the elementary exercise size requirements? Uh, as you think uh, building of structures uh, on and off the lot, uh, we're limited <laughs> reduction in size requirements directed prior to 1991. Uh, how much do you mean? When was this built? When was it built, Walt? When was it built? Yeah. Uh, over 100 years ago. There's uh, records of it being there in 1880s. And it was uh, uh, used as a summer home. And um, over the years, there hasn't been much done to it. On the inside, it was still the old kitchen from the 1920s, the old clawfoot tubs and the original plumbing. Uh, most of it was open stud framing, open rafter framing. And it's a typical summer cottage house, even though it's large. Large cottage. Mm -hmm. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zone. That's probably the most difficult one. Right? Yeah. 
A requested reduction is for the location of the exterior deck and actually is a part of the exterior deck and it is reasonably necessary in order for the owner to enjoy the property. The proposed deck will allow for an outdoor space from the first floor that is not currently available. Like I said, the back of that house is 10 feet off the ground from the first floor. And so this deck that's going on is not only for outside space, but also to put a, a foundation wall under it so we can raise the grade up around the back of the house. Is that one of the, reason, the major reasons that you need to do that? That's one of the major reasons. The, the, the property has undergone a lot of landscaping work already on it, which I know Brian has seen, a landscape architect and uh, um, arbonist, and we've had all kinds of uh, vegetation removed and brought in to create the backyard, and that's one of the reasons for the deck, so they can view their investment in the backyard. <laughs> for a week at the end, we get here. Uh, do the physical features of the lot of the location of the existing structures on the lot. It would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or the new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Yeah, the existing building is located when the easterly setback of the property line angles towards the rear of the house. In order to construct a deck that is compatible with the character of the house, a variance is requested for that small portion. The grading wall at the base of the deck will also allow for a walkable rear yard around the property, which then, of course, allows for the owner to uh, enjoy the use of his property, which he, he couldn't do prior to very well. Yeah, and the impacts of the and effects of the enlargement expansion of the infrastructure of existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the existing impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. In my opinion, there won't be any difference whatsoever for the small little piece. And I haven't started yet. Not on the deck. We have started work on the house, and like I say, it's an ongoing thing, and plans are being developed as the work is being done. Okay. Um, any letters or an open the public to this? There's nobody here from the public for the open public hearing. Do we have any letters or phone calls? Anyone? No, we did not. Uh, close the public hearing. Anything to add, Mr. Uh, you know, the only thing I would br I would bring up is the fact that you know the limited reduction of the yard sizes for a small sliver of the deck, which, by the way, is the the rest of the house behind the deck is way <laughs> more into the set back than the little piece of deck that they're asking for the limited reduction of yard size for. So, you know, as far as the request for limited reduction of yard size go, this one to me is it's, it's not even as bad as the rest of the structure that already is existing there. So um, it, it does try to, I think what the attempt is, and as Walt said, is to try to make the deck somewhat symmetrical and give it a stopping point where it makes sense rather than stop it back halfway through um, that um, sort of bowed part of the house. Do you see that? Yep. Yeah. It, 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 just, it just wouldn't look quite right to stop it back behind the line. It doesn't have a good ending point. <coughs> as minor as that is compared to the rest of the structure that's already encroaching. It's got to be kind of fun. I, would say I, I don't that. see where this is a major issue. Um, is it reasonably necessary to enjoy that? I don't know if it is or not, but it does make sense to do what they're trying to do. And you did mention something about tying it together and making it from the from the till point of view and the yeah, it, the base of the deck allows for the regrading around that. Okay. So have walk the backyard. I open the board for questions, comments, or a motion. Who who owns the land that the garage is on? Um. Well, I would assume it's not the owner. <laughs> <laughs> Does the owner have any idea whose land his garage is sitting on? Well, it's in the right of way, so whoever has the ownership <laughs> of the right of way. Oh, oh, it. It's on land. Probably the Prout's Neck Association. Oh, that Prout's, that's right. That's not public road. Right. If you recall, this this uh, property actually came before the board some some months ago, well, last year. Front, right? Yeah, they actually wanted to. They actually wanted to tear the house down. They basically said it couldn't be saved, and, and now we've got an owner who wants to save it and is putting his resources into that, and um, they're doing a bang-up job out there. So, yeah, the house itself is, is relatively stable and strong, straight. It can you know, easily be re redone and fixed up, which is what the owner wants to do. As a matter of fact, that's the only reason the owner bought the property, because he wanted to maintain that building. 
Just thank you for not saying it's got good bones. I'm so tired of that line on TV. Oh, sorry, Mike. Thanks for not saying it's got good bones. I'm so tired of that line on TV. <laughs> oh, it's probably got good bones. Mr. Huh? Chair? <laughs> yes. Motion to approve as presented with the additional information from Mr. Longstaff stating that the house is already well for <laughs> into and the garage is not even on their property. Oh, second. Okay, discussion on the motion? In that? All in favor? That's you in. Again, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, anything? anything to add for tonight? I don't, other than Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the board. Thank thank you. Same to you. Okay. Same um, to everybody out there watching. Any board uh, members, any comments? No. Merry motion. Christmas. Do have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. To adjourn. All in favor? We are adjourned.